Hi, this is Larry Huppen. I'm the Medical Director at ProLab Orthotics and today we're going to continue with our prescription form tutorial. In this video we're going to look at the rear fist and how to write your orthotic prescription uh, in that section of the form. So here we have the rear foot post section of the form. We see we have four parts of it. We have the type of post, the motion of the post, the material, and the bevel. First type, we have four types available. We have a standard rear foot post, a spot grind, a strip post, and a hole or hole photic. So we'll look at each of those here. Let's go up to the top. So here is first our standard rear foot post. This is in uh, vacuum form polypropylene with an EVA rear foot post. That's this purple section here. And essentially what that rear foot post does is takes the round surface of the bottom of the orthosis and makes it flat to incredulity. We've added on the top here on the EVA post, we'll put a, a piece of plastic called a post cap. That just protects it and makes it last longer. So this standard post can be in either EVA or polypropylene. We'll look at that in a second. Our second type of post, uh, although this isn't really a post, this is in with no post, we call this a spot grind. And in this one, we just grind it flat on the bottom of the polypropylene orthosis. That flats portion makes the device a little bit more stable, certainly not as stable as a rear foot post, but because there's no post, it fits easier into some shoes. So it makes, it, makes for a less bulky orthosis and this spot grind provides a little bit of stability. The next is the hole, and this is just an extension of the spot grind where we grind all the way through. And that does two things. It makes the spot grind itself wider, so it's a little bit more stable. And second is it makes it thinner. We've, we've gone all the way through the device, so it sits, it sits uh, lower inside the shoe. And our final rear foot post type is the strip post. And you can see what that is. It's just the anterior portion of the rear foot post. There's no posterior portion. This went a lot, for example, in soccer cleats. These are shoes that tend to run quite small. And this gives me the ability to have the stability of the rear foot post without taking up any room in the posterior aspect of the shoe. So let's go back to the prescription. The next section we're going to look at here is motion of the post. And here you can see we've got either 4-4 four, four, or 0-0 zero, zero as our choices. And so let's look at, the, at this uh, device looking at, from, looking at it from the back. Here's our rear foot post. Here's medial. Here's lateral over here. And what 0-0 zero, zero means is that um, the first number here just means it's zero degrees inverted on the lateral side. In a 4-4 post, that would mean it's four degrees inverted. All right, so let's go back and look at zero, zero. So zero degrees inverted on the lateral side with the second zero, the second number, meaning the amount of motion. It means there's no motion. That means it's the same on the medial side. So this is just a flat post. It's the it's parallel along the entire bottom of the rear foot post with the front edge of the orthosis. And so we just have a simple post that's going to provide stability in the shoe. 4-4 four, four means that if you look at the yellow line here, it's four degrees inverted on the lateral side and then it's zero degrees on the medial side, meaning it's parallel to the front edge. That means when the device hits, it hits on the outer, on the lateral aspect of the post, four degrees inverted, and then allows four degrees of motion to bring the medial side down parallel to the front edge or with the front edge to the ground. Most of my devices, I do make zero, zero. I just look at the rear foot post as a stabilizer in the shoe. We do have four, four on the prescription form because it, it, it's a um, kind of a traditional number. It was uh, first described by Root and Weed saying that we really required about four degrees of pronation available at heel contact. Arguing that point, but the fact is we don't really aren't we really aren't able to predict inside a shoe how much that rear foot post is moving. Uh, we really just look at this as a stabilizer inside the shoe, but certainly if you'd rather do 4-4, it is available. Next, we look at our material choices. We have polypropylene and EVA available. Here we look at both of those. Here's the EVA post. That's the purple portion. Uh, here's a polypropylene post on a direct milled orthotic. Uh, that This is on the uh, 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 vacuum formed orthosis here. Now, 
there's advantages and disadvantages to both of these materials, although in general, both of them just provide more stability of the orthosis inside the shoe. The advantage of EVA is that it compresses a little bit at heel contact, so just a little bit of shock absorption at heel contact. The disadvantage is because it compresses, it will eventually start to wear out, particularly on the lateral aspect. Here is a polypropylene post. The advantage, it's not going to wear out. It's never going to compress. The disadvantage, not quite as much shock absorption as you would get with the EVA post. Now, the A rear foot post is available on a polypropylene as, I'm sorry, on a vacuum form polypropylene orthosis, as is a polypropylene post. So the vacuum form post can have either EVA or polypropylene, whereas a direct milled orthosis can only have a polypropylene rear foot post. Next we look at the amount of bevel on the post and we can ask for we can ask for the device to have a non-beveled post either medial or lateral. Here we look at the rear foot post. These lines show the amount of bevel medial and laterally and you'll notice that on the medial side here we have about 30 degrees of bevel which is standard both for medial and lateral. But on the lateral side on this device it's pretty much 90 degrees maybe just beveled in a little bit from from dorsal to plantar. What this does is it gives a longer lever arm to the subtalar joint on the lateral side, encourages a more rapid amount of pronation when the patient hits the. For example, you might want to do a non beveled lateral post in a patient who is laterally unstable. Whereas you might want to do a non-beveled medial post on a patient who is medially unstable, a severely pronated patient, you might want to ask for the post not to be beveled medially. So that really can more support either medial or lateral depending on where you need it. Keep it in mind that it can make shoe fit a little bit more difficult and sometimes you need, do need to increase that bevel a little bit uh, if there is a problem with shoe fit. So that is the rear foot post section of our form. Please be sure to watch the other videos that go over each of the other sections.